Welcome to this video where I will be talking about raster data and I say giving a introduction to raster data where we say what is it and especially try and look at what is raster data at this uh, in this element of representational models. So if we uh, take this uh, globe as meaning our reality and then we had earlier talked about our conceptual models so where we create our ontology and we had basically three types of conceptual models object models where we have a thing a road a car a forest fire we have categorical partitionings where we have some property that is classified such as soil or pollutant or whatever salinity and we have a property field where we have something that varies continuous such as elevation or temperature, air pressure. So all of these are at this conceptual model are analog in their nature. So they do not have any form of making the objects discrete. Then the next level where we talk about our logical or as I prefer to call them our digital models is that where we come from the analog world and go into the digital representation, how can these data be represented? Um, on a computer, so we need to make them discrete. So we can't have all numbers, we can't have all coordinates. So we have here vector models, we had raster models, which is a new concept here, and there's also other models that um, are outside the scope of this course. Once we have our digital model or logical model, that can then be converted to something that is storable on a computer. So we have a physical representation. We've been working a lot with geopackages. So they are physical ways of organizing your data on a computer. It can be shape files or it can be TIFF files. There's some form of, of um, logic or what we should say in it, this natural flow that objects are typically represented as vector models and they in, at least in QGIS, would typically be represented in a geo package or in a, a, a other type of database if it's on an ArcGIS. Uh, shape files, they are a bit out of date by now, but they are still there. And they are also vector data. Categorical partitioning can be both represented as raster and vector typically. Um, and raster files, they can also, with the later versions of, of GeoPackets, they can be stored in GeoPackets, but they can also be stored as TIFF files, so standard image file. And finally, we have our property file fields that are typically represented as raster, but they can also be represented as ISO lines or points in a vector data set. So um, these are those basic steps you go through from your reality to how your model is stored on your computer and raster is like the vector a logical or digital model something where we talk about how can we take this concept and make it into something that is manageable by a computer the typical process of back to data is that this is an aerial photograph and yes this is in itself raster data um, and then someone traces that raster data and digitizes it into in this case buildings and these buildings are from vector can then be converted into raster this conversion of vector to raster is although it's a relatively simple operation there are many subtleties to it that um, I will cover in another video. So if we just talk about how raster data is created, typically it's from one of the following four methods. It's from a sensor that generates raster data, such as a satellite or a airborne um, being an airplane or being a drone um, sensor. So there's lots of sensors that generate data directly in raster data. Raster data is also often created through 
some mathematical operation on vector data. So we will later be talking about density calculations, but there's also interpolations and all ways of converting um, vector to raster data. In this case, I have this is violence, reported violence incidents in a, um, a, 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 a location in Denmark. And um, here we have for each time there's been a reported incidence of violence, it's been registered. And then we've done a density calculation so we can see where the density is the highest. As I mentioned, raster data is also often created through the conversion of vector data, basically because if you do not have a sensor that generates it as its output, you will typically create vector data and then convert to raster data. So um, for, the base data, for the base data, if you wish, conversion from, from vector to raster is very common. Finally, um, lots of raster data is really just formed by doing calculations on other raster data. So here we have a classified satellite image. So this is the Korean, the European um, land cover classification. Um, this data set, strangely enough, you go to the EA, so the European Environmental Agency's website, you can download this data as both raster, as it is born as a classification of a raster image, but they, they then also convert it to vector, so you can download the towns and the forests and so on as, ras as vector elements. But what is it that makes this um, raster so interesting? Well, the secret to why raster is used so much is that it is a homogeneous data structure. So at the computer level, you might say that there will be eight bytes or eight bits set in one, so one byte or two bytes of uh, memory for each cell. That means in this case, uh, this one will be two, four, six, eight, ten. So if I want to know what is down here, I just have to go. 10 bytes down my data file. So I can, and if I want to know what's here, I go four bytes along. And that is a almost immediate operation on the computer. In a vector file, you have to do a lot of searching and finding out which polygon is in. And this is uncomparably much quicker. So when we have operations where it's important that we quickly can look up or chains a value at a given location, then raster data are really efficient. There is a bit of a drawback in raster data is that it does not have any concept of objects. So a cell can know that it is a lake, a this area is covered by lake, and this area here could be covered by town, but it doesn't know which lake of each town. So all of the ones don't know that they belong together into one object. They know that they are lakes, but they don't know that they all together are some specific lake. So we don't have this object. We can't say how big is this lake, and we can't assign it a name as such. It's just our objects here. You can do lots of tricks for linking these to database tables and things like that, um, but then you are tweaking the raster data and you're losing some of the efficiency for remember what really the main reason for using raster data is this extreme efficiency it has due to its really homogeneous data structure um, there's another specialty as because we do have this homogeneous structure if there's a hole we need to fill that hole if we can't have a cell with no value in it so we need to have a value that we assign the special meaning of no value, be it kind of no data or null or not applicable, different names, same meaning. But basically, they are just values, so typically minus 999 or 9900. Or, but it can be anything. It could be 7. 7 is not used for anything in this one. So it could be 7. We just say, dear program, the number 7 means null or no data. So there are those specialties about um, having to fill in what we do. I mean, if, if, it, if it was a vector layer with buildings, it was very easy. We have a polygon for each building. 
and where there was no polygon, there was no buildings. But in raster, we have something everywhere, and therefore we need a special value to assign to no data. So we therefore have to think about what are these um, special data and things like that. You should be aware that there is something that looks like raster, and it almost cracks like raster, but it doesn't quite swim like raster. So in other words, there is something that is in QGIS, they call them grids. In um, ArcGIS, they call them tessellations. So they are vector polygons, typically um, re rectangle, triangles, or hexagons um, that look like they're rat uh, raster data, but they are really just vector polygons. So they are good for doing density calculations, different odds and ends where we don't need the special efficiency of the raster data. So remember, they look like it, but they have do not have this power of being structured. You can have, um, in some experimental um, softwares, or a bit more nerdy softwares, there are uh, especially hexagons, because hexagon is a really useful thing, because the standard square raster has one major drawback. It has two types of neighbors. So it has neighbors that share borders, and neighbors that share corners. So there are the four true neighbors that share corners, and then there are the other four uh, sorry, f that share edges, and then there are four neighbors that generally share one point. In the hexagon, all neighbors share a border. So we don't have this some strangeness about what neighbors is. So from many points of view, hexagon are much better for doing uh, raster data, but it hasn't um, it's not so popular in, in, in mainstream GIS. But there are these shapes and they look like raster, but they remember they do not have this power of calculation that you'll find in the raster data structure. So to sum up, when we talk about raster data, we have um, some sources, many sources, satellites, um, drones, that generate data as raster. So basically raster data is just a picture. So if you have a drone or a camera on it, it is really generating raster data. Um, for many type of, of analysis, it's much quicker because we have this very homogeneous data structure where we can just count number of bytes along. Um, it's, um, can be stored in, in common formats, TIFF, whatever. The drawbacks is that we can't represent small things. Nothing can be smaller than a cell. So um, the cell is the smallest object point. So even you have, if you have a, want to represent where all the flies and your grid cells are 10 by 10 meters, then one fly will take up a 10 by 10 meter um, area. And the same with width. If you want to show where you have a um, high power um, electricity, they will also have a width of at least one cell. You can only have one value in each cell. So if you have a stream network, you can only have how many cubic meters of water flow through per minute. You can't also have the water depth, water quality, all of those other things that we could if it was vector data. We don't have any concept of um, entities. We can only represent it is a lake, but we can't talk about which lake. And this means that there are less categorical possibilities. We can't make the border a different color and then the different color in the middle and things like that. So there are much less possibilities from a categorical point of view. So these are these basic um, things about what is raster data. Um, and how we can use it. In uh, other videos, I will talk about which types of calculations we can do it, and we'll also, of course, look how we can use raster data in different types of GIS. So, bye.